Hi and welcome to another video. In this video is part two of the uh, Netgear Nighthawk switch. So this is a pro gaming switch that's uh, capable of got 10 gigabit uh, ports on there. So there's two t 10 gigabit ports that are multi gig uh, compatible and then you also have uh, eight ports that are also just uh, one gigabit uh, ports as well. So as we log in to the uh, switch, you can see here, this is the dashboard you receive. So on here, you can see the actual uh, Nighthawk uh, SX10, the model switch. And then it also tells you the active ports. So uh, how many devices you've got connected to the switch. So you can see I've got five. I've just actually updated the firmware. That's actually, I think it must be uh, about six months old now. And that's the latest one. So that was 1.7.1.3. And I got that from the netgear.com website. And you just go down there to the support and then download firmware. And we'll come on to the, how to do the upload of the firmware um, in a minute. So as you can see, you've got your MAC address. You can name, rename the switch if you so want to, uh, the serial number, and then the exact model. So this one, even though it's the Netgear uh, Nighthawk SX10. Uh, the model uh, number is the GS810EMX. You can set the language to auto, so you have a choice here of languages. And then once you do change you know, this, you can hit the apply button. So here you've got LEDs, the DHCP, lag, and preset mode. So these will take you to these other features that and settings that are in the top menu here. So this is like a quick uh, link. Um, to, to take you straight to that direct menu and in the switch uh, settings. Then also down here on the port status menu, you'll see all your devices if they're connected and where it says available, nothing's connected. So if we cl click on one of these, you'll see that nothing's connected and it's got no speed. Um, so if we go to the top one, so that's an uplink. So that's where these coming from the uh, router. And you can see here, you've got the speed. So I've got it set to auto. And then you've got the link speed. So I've, this one is connected at 10 gigabits per second. And then you've got also your port speed. So you've got, you can limit the ports if you so want. And you can do this within this uh, menu or in the other menus that are coming up later on. So if we click edit, you here you can activate. So you can switch off the LED if you so want. And then also here you can set a limit on the speed. So you can restrict the speeds of the, uh, basically the uploads and downloads. And then also you can set the uh, priority of the actual port as well. And also is really quite good is that you can set the color. So for 10G, I put it to green, as you can see here, and you can select others if you want from there from the RGB. Um, and then I've selected, if it does, if I know my 10G, uh, has gone then I can then uh, I put red for the one gig so just in case and then the purples so I know that it's changed uh, to there so you can customize it and you can customize the brightness as well of it and once you've updated these parts you can just click apply um, and that's the same for all of them uh, all of these ones here so you can do exactly the same so if it's a particular device that you do want to limit the speed of like this one is actually connected at 2.5 uh, gigabits per second on Ethernet. Um, I've got no limits in place, but again, and you can customize each port with different color schemes if you pro, if you so want. And you can set the frequency for each one as well and the brightness. So you can do it, as we said, you can do it for each port, it has their own settings, their own colors and prioritization. So it's really good. You can customize everything here um, to your custom needs. So moving on to the next menu option we have up is gaming. So as you can see here, it's got a two uh, charts here, one for receiving and one for the transmit. So both these are like a timeline over, you can set that between five minutes, 30 minutes, one hour or 10 hours. And so as you can see, I've got nothing really running through it right now, um, but this will slowly start to update and you'll be able to see um, port activities and again you can switch off ports if you so want to so you can click here and then it will only show you what port you wanted you've highlighted again over here you can um, like you did in the first menu here you've got no limits but again 
through all the 10 ports you can click here and drag and restrict the uh, speed of each of the ports as well so you can do that here as well for receiving and transmit so yeah so you, and you can do this with all the ports as uh, as I said and this gives you a good graph of how much data is coming through and anything else so next is the switch so uh, switching options that you have here so the settings so you have um, some QoS or quality of service and you can set it what mode so there's port based or there's the uh, DSCP um, most of the time most people you leave this as port based you do have uh, broadcast filtering and that's to prevent massive transmission of broadcast packets uh, forwarded from each port so it stops like a flood of packets but if you've got no no devices that are really going to cause that then I might as well leave it off and it's off as default as well again here you can set rate limits for your ports like we did before all you have to do is click the little pencil and you can set your rate limits here and then the priority again for each of these you can prioritize the ports so uh, then next moving on to VLANs so uh, virtual LANs is you if you could set up a VLAN already within your uh, router um, and then as long as the other switches or other devices within your network support VLANs you can activate this here so you've got basic port based advanced um, and you've got also the 8021Q standard um, and you've got this one here as well for the VLAN so again you can activate all of these and as soon as you do it it'll just come up with a warning and you continue through to the menu multicast so um, on by default is a, a IGMP snooping so that basically optimizes you need this on um, by default but also if it's off I would advise to switch it on because it does optimize your performance so this is how it tells if your traffic is streaming or what kind of traffic is going through there so it can prioritize the gaming packets over um, you just doing normal web browsing things like that again here you've got options to block unknown multicast address these by default are switched off and if unless you're having any issues you might as well leave them off as well and you've got here a static router port as well so if there's a device that you've plugged in there that's actually monitoring uh, IGMP you can set what port that's on to as well and again just to, to apply these settings you just click apply then lag so the lag is the uh, link aggregation groups so this basically bonds two uh, ports together um, so if you switch it on say here you can then select okay I want uh, what ports I want to uh, say eight and nine um, I want those to, to work together and then when that's connected to another device so your NAS or your other switch you put on their one the lag you switch that on and put 8 and 9 as well on theirs so at least then you can then um, set it up so they connect together so they'll be using double the bandwidth in theory of uh, both ports so it'll be 2 gigabits per second and it'll be transferring the data using uh, intermediate between the two so that's always a really good feature to speed up your network speeds as well and then if you have a NAS or any compatible device and it's easy enough it's really normally it's quite complicated but they make it very straightforward here where literally you can just click and select and then also you've got a choice here you can set up multiple up to four um, lags so you can have on the first one one and two this one three and four next one lag three you can have six and seven and the next one you can have nine and ten so you can set up multiple ones where you can bond the uh, ports together um, and that's really good i mean you can do some uh, increase your speeds of your network as well and again once you've done that you just click apply but you just got to make sure that your other devices you're connecting are compatible and have been set up the same way if you've set it up here as well so moving on to uh, diagnostics so we've got some quite good functions here so you've got a cable test so say if you select again your port one and you click next and it'll come back okay so if it does have any problems it, and it does detect it it will, it will give you a measurement as well in meters for the fault distance from the switch so you give give you an idea if you've got two cables together or the cable is say pinched or then it will tell you as well so it gives you a good idea so that again that's a really easy so you can select more than one and it will test them ports for you 
So it's really good function as well and makes it very easy. And it does explain down here about the Cat5 to the uh, Cat7 and UDP and things like that. So it's always good to have. So loop prevention, so that ha this is on by default. So this prevents um, blocks or ports in a loop. So basically if a loop is detected, the port um, with smaller bandwidth is blocked. So basically it's always good to have this on and it's on by default, as I said. It will just stop any uh, errors that are causing any issues with your switch. Uh, port mirroring, so this is off by default, is basically if you've got a device connected that is monitoring port information and you want to copy all of the all the port data from going in that's going into number one you can then select another port say okay i've got a server that's recording wants to copy all the data that's going on into that port one and that computer that's recording it is on port three again you can select it here and make it very easy user interface and then uh, lastly on this one is port statistics. So you can see here if you are having multiple errors. So it tells you here are the uh, ports that we've got. And then also it tells you here uh, the bytes sent and received. So you can see how much data is going through them. And also if there's any errors. And you can also then use this to identify which port is causing the error. So that's a good set of diagnostics. And it, like I said, it's very easy to use interface. So it's, it's really good. So uh, this is the last menu for settings. So you've got here preset mode. So you really, these are the presets that come with it. You've got gaming preset, media streaming, and standard presets. So all on standard, all ports have equal prioritization. Media is optimizes port nine for media devices and port one for uplink. And then gaming is optimized port 10 for a gaming device that's plugged in. And then port one is your uplink. So that would be to your router. Um, or to your other switch or anything like that so yeah so it's good it's just got one click there you, you can customize these as well if you want to and then also you can save if you want to on you have two slots where you can save your preset modes that you've selected as well and as it said here it saves your current settings for quality of service rate limiting multicast led colors flow control and power savings so that's always really good configuration file so you can back up your file all your settings and then you can restore them so if you do have to factory reset your switch you can just restore the settings very easy here leds again this is really good so you these are port activity leds so you can see here again like we did in the first menu you can choose them and here you can edit them again um, and you do have a batch mode so you can select all of them so if you normally by default these all come in a purple blue color um, if you want them all like I do like green just to say that's 10 gig or 1 gig so I know green means it's good um, so then you can batch edit and it will edit all of them all at once or as you find and then moving on to the power LED so that's the LED strip at the front of the switch uh, you can either switch it off or totally or you can change the color as well and again you can select from the color wheel here so this is always a really good option to have. You have power saving mode here. So this is like it says, you switch this on and it reduces the power um, through the uh, standard here for the 802.3 uh, AZ uh, efficiency for ethernet. So that's always good if you want to power save, uh, if you're not using certain ports and then they power down as well. So as we said before in the front menu, the home menu, um, this is where I updated the firmware. You download it from Netgear, you unzip it, and then there's an image file in the folder. Um, then you just click on the folder here, choose where you've down the image file, and then update. And it was straightforward. It restarted, and it did it within about five minutes. If you do have any issues and you need to reboot the switch, you've got the option here. So you just go to reboot, and you can reboot it here as well. So again, you've got your project reg product registration, switch discovery, is here these are on by default um, but if you don't want it to be able to be found then you can switch these off but it's always good to have at least these on um, at least one of these idea um, on so you can actually identify the switch and then you can log into this user interface if you forget the IP or the IP changes without you knowing so next uh, is access control so here you can limit who has access so you can set a specific IP address for just say your desktop computer 
So only that one can access the switch and edit any of the settings. So no one else in the family or any other devices can access and uh, edit any of the settings of the switch. Second to last is factory default. And again, this just restores if you're gonna sell it or you've got some um, issues with it, then you can just put this back to factory reset. And as I said in part one in the unboxing video, it does have a reset switch um, underneath as well where you'll just need like a sim reject tool just to push the reset. And lastly is change password. Again, by default, it does make you change the password from password. Uh, that is a default password for the switch. Um, so that's good security practice. But again here, you just put in your current password, your new password, and you click apply, um, and then that's it. So uh, la lastly on here is just the reboot switch. So you've got the option here, the power saving. Uh, this will take you to the Netgear support and uh, log out. So it's all straightforward and it's really user friendly uh, as you can see here. But yeah, so uh, I hope you've enjoyed this quick video of going through the advanced features of the Netgear SX10 uh, gaming uh, switch. If you have any questions, then please leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching and have a great day.